Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Mario Party. Specifically, Mario Party 2. You know, the one where Luigi adorably dresses up like a cowboy and Toad dresses up like a pirate ship and humps the air for whatever reason. Yeah, that one. Anyways, it's one of my favorite Mario Party games in the entire series, in good part because of the minigames. Mario Party 2 probably has my favorite collection of minigames, and is probably the most iconic batch of minigames in the entire series too, hosting tons of memorable classics. That being said, it is not without some noteworthy duds either. So I thought it'd be a fun idea to do a list of the top 5 best and top 5 worst minigames in Mario Party 2. In my opinion, anyways. Starting things off with the number 5 worst minigame in Mario Party 2, we have Day at the Races. In this minigame, you have to select between Womp, Thwomp, Boo, and Babam on who you think will win in a race to the finish line. The problem is that all this is completely random, so you just have to pick a character and hope for the best. Unless you happen to be the player picking last, in which case you're just stuck with whoever is left over. Oh, and by the way, this is a battle minigame, so there's going to be a lot of coins on the line amidst all this randomness. Seems fair, right? Alright, I have a good feeling about Boo. I think Boo's going to win this thing, so I just need to pick Boo. So far, so good. Ah, screw you, Yoshi. Come on. Alright, just not Womp. Please, just not Womp. Okay, I guess we're stuck with Womp. Alright. Womp, you may not be the best. You may not be the fastest. But I believe in you and you can win this thing. He's doing it. He's actually doing it. Go, Womp. Go, I believe in you. Okay, oh, and he just fell on his face. Not getting up. Boo's in the lead. And Boo won. Yep. <sighs> Damn it, Yoshi. Kicking things off for the top 5 best list of minigames, at number 5 we have Speed Hockey, the lone 2v2 minigame on either of these lists. In Speed Hockey, you and your partner are trying to score 3 goals on your opponents as a Koopa Shell bounces around the rink, but the more times the Koopa Shell gets hit, the faster and crazier it will move around, which really amps up the tension in this minigame and can lead to some fun and chaotic finishes. I mean, most of the time it feels like defense is the best offense in this minigame, as the Koopa Shell can be so hectic, I found focusing on defending your goal is the best bet most of the time. Also, you can only move up and down, so you have to have a lot of anticipation with your moves, and at times, if you're not careful, the wrong move will have you scoring on yourself. Speed hockey is what happens when you mix Pong, Air Hockey, and Mario Party all together at once, and it definitely leads to a memorable minigame. Now, at the number 4 worst minigame, we have Mecha Marathon. For this one, it's a matchup of the button mashers as you need to wind up your mecha fly guy by pressing A and B as much as you can in 10 seconds, and then watch as your fly guy hovers across the path with the fly guy going the furthest being crowned the button masher champ. Now in general, I've never been a big fan of Mario Party minigames that just involve mashing buttons as fast as humanly possible, and it's not just because I really, really suck at them. It's just because I don't find it as fun. And that's reason enough for it to make the bottom five for me. In a minigame that was surely inspired by the title screen from Super Mario 64, we have Facelift at number four for the best minigames in Mario Party 2. In Facelift, one of our beloved Mario characters essentially gets their face scrambled up. And it's then up to you to alter their facial features and as accurately as possible match the new distorted image. This is just classic, wacky Mario Party fun that always provides a good laugh. And I do have to admit that given the amount of times Yoshi has screwed me over in Mario Party games, it's kind of therapeutic when his face comes up. Just pull this here and perfect. Number three on the worst minigame side of things is Bumper Balls, the notorious drawer of draws. In Bumper Balls, the goal is to bounce your opponents off the edge while everyone is running on top of balls. But if you've ever played this minigame with any even somewhat competent players, then you know it almost always ends in a draw, as there's so much space on the platform and the bounces from your balls just don't have enough power in them to knock anyone around very far. I mean, even when I'm just playing against CPUs, it still ends up as a draw. I think the worst part is that there's so much potential in this minigame, it feels so close to being a classic. So in the end, Bumper Balls, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Back over to the best minigames, we have Slot Car Derby coming in at number 3. This is one of those Mario Party minigames where they decide just to put the character's head on some random object like some weird experiment gone wrong between Luigi and an RC car. Anyways, in Slot Car Derby, you tilt your control stick forward to speed up in a race to complete 4 laps around the track. 
The thing is, if you speed up too much, especially around the curves, you'll spin out and cost yourself precious time recovering. The trick is to almost manage your speed in a sense by releasing the control stick just as you begin seeing your tires beginning to sput around the course. It takes a while to get the feel for this one, but once you get it, it's just tons of fun to play this minigame. Coming in at the runner-up position on the worst list, number two is Lava Tile Isle, a minigame where the players are suspended above a pit of lava on a collection of grindles that will periodically move around kinda similarly to the Bowser puzzle in Lethal Lava Land in Super Mario 64. Sounds cool, right? Well, that's where they get you, cause in all honesty, it's just a bunch of awkwardly shifting around for 30 seconds with the outcome more than likely resulting in a draw. At least in my experiences, anyways. You can try and throw some jabs at your opponents, but that's usually more trouble than it's worth in my opinion. In the end, this just feels like bumper balls, but without the potential. As for the runner-up on the best list, we have Hexagon Heat at number 2. In this minigame, everyone is standing on a group of seven different colored hexagons, with Toad off to the side raising flags of various colors matching said hexagons. What Toad is really doing here is attempting to send us to our lava-filled grave, as whatever colored flag he raises will indicate what colored hexagon stays above the lava, while the other six sink down creating a mad dash to the remaining hexagon left. This keeps going until one player is left standing, and the longer the minigame goes, the faster the hexagons move, which can make this minigame pretty intense. You also have to be careful with jumping as bouncing on other players' heads can be pretty dangerous and ultimately send you to your doom. This is just classic, tension-filled Mario Party fun that I love to revisit every time I play Mario Party 2. Now for the number one absolute worst Mario Party 2 minigame we have, Crane Game. Yep, another button-mashing minigame that I truly groan at any time it comes up. Crane Game is a 1v3 player minigame where the one player is attached to a crane and has to pick up the other three players who are stuffed toys and drop them into the pipe before time runs out. The one player mashes A to try and hold on to the players, while the three players mash A in an attempt to wiggle free whenever they get picked up. There's also three stopwatches lying around the arena that the one player can pick up giving them a collective 65 extra seconds dragging this minigame out even more. And I swear the button mashing seems so much in the favor of the one player as well. When I'm one of the stuffed toys, I stand no chance at all. But when I'm attached to the claw, I can actually win this minigame. And like I've said, I absolutely suck at button mashing minigames. All in all, that's enough for Crane Game to take home the award for worst minigame in Mario Party 2. And for the number one best minigame in Mario Party 2, we have none other than Shellshocked. Hey, more Mario characters' heads on inanimate objects. Neat. Anyways, in Shellshocked, you control a Koopa tank, and your goal is to fire cannonballs at your opponents and hit them twice before getting hit twice yourself. You have a straight shot, a lob shot to shoot your cannonball over the pipes through the stages, and there's even a fixed aim mechanic so you can move around while keeping your aim. There are also three stages to play on with this minigame. The first one is a small stage with one pipe in the middle, and you start facing away from all the other players creating a cool standoff feel. Then there's the second stage that only has a few pipes and is a lot more open. Then you have the third stage, which is a large stage with multiple pipes littered throughout it, which is my personal favorite, as it leaves a lot of room to strategize around the terrain. There's so much nuance to this minigame, and it's just so fun to play. So for me, it's a clear choice for the crown of best Mario Party 2 minigame. Alright, so that's my top 5 best and top 5 worst minigames in Mario Party 2. Make sure to give this video a like, because one like equals one less draw in bumper balls. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more video game content, and comment down below on what you think are the best and worst minigames in Mario Party 2. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.